And with that, welcome back, everyone, to the show of Requirement, a Harry Potter podcast brought to you by the Gazebo Fett Network, streaming everywhere you get podcasts and also on YouTube. It's good to be back with a fresh new episode after some time away. My name is David Gonzalez, and I'm joined by my co-host, Abby Tooley and Spencer David Price, Mr. Fun Glasses, as his name is today. <laughs> It's been I a while. Joined, so. I also joined the stream before Abby. So yes. I've never been yeah. up here. This is, I feel like I've moved up in, in the in the world. <laughs> and there you go. I really, yeah. I'm on the Actually, that of you guys have segregated me to the bottom. Listen, <laughs> I, you segregated yourself. <laughs> I, I, I did nothing. Um, it, nope. It's just how the how the cookie crumbles and luckily you both are in Hufflepuff so the outlines of your like of, of your box where you guys are are luckily the Hufflepuff color still no matter what order you guys are in so this is all really great for people that are listening to just the audio version of this by the way we love yeah. you guys too though <laughs> we love Our your Patreon members no I'm yes <laughs> we don't have those <laughs> Yeah, they they only our Patreon members only get the audio version of the podcast. They are actually banned from watching the video one because obviously that was actually worse to be a Patreon member. It's worse, yeah, <laughs> than a regular person. Mm -hmm. We don't it's have kind of like Patreon, when we guys. used to do fake advertisement, and it was like used more to? expensive I'm to use kidding. our promo code than. Oh yes, <laughs> is, you'll actually lose money just... on the purchase. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. an era. That wasn't. That was the. That was an OG. Yeah, that wasn't. That was an OG for sure. But uh, big news since the last time we've recorded an episode, both of y'all cracked. <laughs> so who wants to go first? <laughs> cracked. Uh, cracked. In my case, I, I would say Abby cracked. I, I like minorly. Mm -hmm. Minorly, just a little fissure. Because I already had the system, I just didn't have the game. And we're talking about that is, like, of course, kids. that's actually true. Abby had to buy a console and the game. Okay, I, but like... I got, and also, and this is, I can say this because she doesn't listen to this podcast. Plus, may or may not know it exists. My sister bought me half the game, <laughs> not the whole game. Okay. She bought me half, but as Isabel suggested, because she didn't want to buy me the whole game because she loves me so much, um, she bought me a gift card, <laughs> which yeah. I applied to. The it was a very expensive game, though. Like, it is cheapskates everywhere. I feel you right here. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I've played it very little. Abby's had it for longer than I have. Yeah, Abby has I have no as a true historian, <laughs> as a true historian, both in Harry Potter and Star Wars, has already finished the story. Yeah. My so, it was a wild <laughs> time. It was good. Okay. I was <laughs> yeah. So how was it, Abby? Other than yeah, it was good. I'm pretty sure playtime, like I probably played a an entire twenty-four hours. And that's how long it took to do the storyline mm. on the easy mode, not the story mode. Because I think there's four. So there's like easy, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's story, easy, normal, and hard. Yeah. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, there's four. So I played on easy. And when I looked at my playthrough time, like it keeps track of how many hours you've played. I think I had played about 24 hours by the time. I finished. I had avoided a lot of side quests. I only did what was necessary in order to make my character the right level in order to keep going. Um, Cause that's why I like doing, I'm a person, I just, I wanna, I wanna experience the story and then I'll go back and do a lot of the side quests afterwards. Mm. Um, and so I thought it was really interesting. Um, lots of, new ideas about the wizarding world I hadn't thought of before. Um, new characters. Um, I'm still a little confused. 
<laughs> Still a little confused as to why she had to start in her fifth year. I don't know mm-hmm. that that still makes much sense. And I might have missed it. I would also played a lot of it after, like, right after getting back from a mission trip. I spent, like, a full, like, 12 hours mm-hmm. playing straight through um, when I got back. Good way to go. And so I, it was my rest day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So I may, I may have missed it. Um, I think maybe they tried to like, they brought up the fact that she's not the only one who started in her fifth year. Mm -hmm. Like there's another character who has similar abilities. I keep forgetting you keep saying she, because it's your character. It's your character. Yeah. (laughs) My bad. My character um, has the similar abilities as another character who also started in their fifth year, but I I mm-hmm. still don't two other characters. Yeah. At least. Still don't know why that is. <sighs> Maybe they explain it in a side quest somewhere. <laughs> well, I okay. Wait. I finished the main storyline. There's still like a you finish the main storyline at like level 24 or something, or level 25. Or at least I did. And then to like finish, finish, you have to do like the house cup, but you have to be level 34 <laughs> to do the house cup. And so mm. you have to like finish your field guide or something and then level up your character a ton and do a bunch of side quests before you can do the house cup and stuff, but whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm still working my way there. I'm not there yet. But that's my only, like, I'm a little confused still. But the rest of it was kind of cool. And I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I did. I still love playing it. I have a yeah. blast. And I did, like, the main storyline. Especially doing the trials. I think the the four main trials that you have to do are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Spencer, you you seem to be <laughs> thinking a lot. Is this one um, oh, before you go? Before you go, there's just a lot of content. Question, I love all the. Do content. you have to? Do you? Are you about to say? Well, I love Harry Potter. <laughs> is that what you're about to say? That's how. That's how your body language is looking right now. That's you know I didn't think about that. Um, I was trying to figure out the best way to start. So I'll start by saying, guys, I love Harry Potter. (laughs) I don't get it. I don't know a better way of saying it. I, I don't, I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not on the hype train. Um, much at all. Um, I have been trying to put my finger on why, but I've been dragging and I'm on, I'm not that far into it yet, but also haven't been interested enough to keep pushing myself through like Abby did. And I feel like maybe it's been oversold to me. I don't know. I think I also don't like games where you create a main character. I don't know, I don't have much prior experience to that, but I think that might be a small bit of it. (laughs) I just, I don't get it. I also don't get, I also don't get the 15 year old going to Hogwarts thing. I think they just did that. They were like, oh, well, we'll just make them a fifth year. Oh, well, we'll make that part of the story though. And then no one will question it. So they wrote themselves into the corner and then they spent their whole game writing themselves out of said corner. Um, that all being said, the world is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like very well designed, but it does to me kind of feel like I'm walking into a Hogwarts sandbox, if you will, with a bunch of pretty one dimensional characters. And by that, I mean the students, not the professors necessarily. 
I don't know, man. I think yeah, so far. I, I you... highly disagree. Well, very much. I just want to be throwing hot takes. There's, or... there's a few. These, some of the side quests that you got to do, man. Yeah. Oh man. Like some of the main yeah. ones, like with your main friends. Mm-hmm. I I just hate Wild. my own character. Like without without getting into spoilers, Sebastian's story. <sighs> yeah. He's all right. So far, he's oh, probably my favorite character okay. so far. Okay, Spencer, that will, well, how I'm, far? No spoilers, how no far mind. did you get? Yeah, how far did you get? Like, what level? I am you? not that far. I, I'm on okay. level six. Okay, so that's n- nothing. <laughs> it will develop. Honesty. So honesty I will out, say. Okay? I, will I just say... haven't been, and it's very. It is. If you have mm-hmm. not played this game, listener, it is very, very slow at the beginning. Yes. It does not rush you into it. I will say that I think part of the issue for me is there are some times where I almost forget that I'm playing like a Harry Potter Wizarding World game. Like I remember at some like at some points, but I think the the main storyline has so many new concepts that we've never heard of before and it makes me wonder well what happened to all that which at the end i kind of understand like yeah it makes a little bit of sense but they just introduced so many new things that are never were never previously addressed which is cool but also it just yeah, it's I hard mean, to tie it in all of to, the ancient magic stuff yeah. currently doesn't interest me yeah because it doesn't feel as esta- well established in the world I will but say. mostly I just I don't like the main character, aka myself. <laughs> and part maybe the reason is that I don't like I like myself as a human being, but I don't think I like myself as a avatar that has to talk to people. And then I it's like they just have to make it they have to like make it so bland. It's like choose one bland phrase or choose another bland phrase. Or he just says things. And then the no one calls you by name. And that just, that irks me. I don't, I think that really bugs me. The most, some of the most fun that I have in this game is going through and rescuing different magical beasts and taking them back to the room of requirement. Oh, yeah. And like taking care of them and breeding them. I think it's fun. I also am grumpy. Can you go into other houses or do you have to start the game over again and play in a separate house? I don't think you can enter other common rooms. That really bugs Mm -hmm. me. I I, I see why you shouldn't be able to do that, but I'm like, there it is. Just just let me in. Well, because like other students wouldn't have been able to make it in. Like... That's the whole point. It's like students no, from other houses that's, can't get into your common so, room. That's so nitpicky. But like if I've already I done so know. many things that are like no, sandboxy, no. just let me do whatever I want. <laughs> no, because they don't even let you kill anybody in yeah. the game. Not yet. <laughs> like they they won't let you kill professors or students like just out of random. So why would they let you a hufflepuff yeah. go into the slithering common room sure. when that is established as you can't do that period mm-hmm. but i can just use ancient magic to get in <laughs> well see and but that's the thing like we can use so in terms of the fifth year thing and this episode's not about hogwarts legacy <laughs> but it wasn't supposed to be but here we wasn't are. supposed to be anyway but Look here we us. are yeah <laughs> who would have thought <laughs> um but Me. <laughs> yeah but in, in terms of the fifth year thing obviously abby you you would know better than i i mean i think it's pretty crazy that you've clocked 24 hours of of game time and i've already finished the story when i've clocked 23 hours and i had just completed the second trial like i haven't done three or four i've done a lot of ex- exploring stuff um when it comes to giving us explanations for things this is probably just me i don't need a full-blown explanation to just be like okay like 
the fact that they do have another character who went through the kind of same thing that my character is going through, it, it shows that it's a very unique thing, one that doesn't make sense, but magic is also kind of weird at the same time. And especially when we're talking about ancient kind of magic, if that is what fuels your just overall magic in general, like you weren't supposed to be a wizard, like I can I can kind of wrap my head around that. But that's with me, that's with me not knowing the full story yet. And they 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 acknowledge, oh yeah, this is kind of weird and stuff, and it doesn't really make any sense. But then what happens after that, I have no idea. So I might come around to your way of thinking if by the end of this game, they still don't explain that. I'm just like, eh, it's just too broad of an explanation. Well, and it and doesn't I make any sense. Quickly double checked on like Reddit to see what other people were saying. If they've got an answer and everyone mm -hmm. said there's no official explanation. They didn't really offer a background. Mm -hmm. Um so it says like Warner Brothers community manager on one of these people's mm -hmm. things. And it says this is intentionally left open to allow you to fill in your own backstory of your character so you can be truly you. We don't predefine your character so this can be your legacy, which I don't know mm. if this is a real Warner Brothers person or not, but that doesn't feel like a good excuse to me. <laughs> um, but for uh, the most part, it leaves specific. some opportunity for some fun fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Honestly, they don't. So it sounds like it's just not really well explained as to why you started. I as a think fifth year. I just I think this game could have benefited from a strong. Doesn't matter which gender, main character character. They could start in their fifth year, all of those things, but just having a name and a place in the universe, like you need. I felt I feel a, there's a gap there personally. Because, like, but obviously what? Harry Potter has Harry Potter. Fantastic Beast has Newt Scamander, which is just this fantastic, pun unintended, character that the right. whole series is built around. And you have, like, mm -hmm. relatives of well-known characters. In yeah. This, but yeah. No, no, I'm saying there's great character performances little, here. Dis I still agree that there's a little bit of a disconnect in some ways. There's a, it's a bit disjointed. But ultimately, I just, I just don't get it. Yet. At least. I'm not going to put it away. I mean, I spent money, <laughs> a great deal of money on this thing. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just... And it is my style of game, like, in every way. I think Hogwarts map is fantastic. It is a little... Like, the Hamlets and stuff, it just felt like they needed to put more things in the map. So, there's just more stuff, which is fine. I I kind of felt like Hogsmeade looked weird. Looked a little different than in the movies. I wasn't bothered too much by that. Hogwarts itself at, was like some some parts of Hogwarts was just snapshot taken right out of the mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. And that was wild. Yeah. Honestly, I think yeah, Hogsmeade looks looks different, but it looks more appealing than the movies portrayed Hogsmeade to be. Because Hogsmeade How was like you? one building and then a bunch of snow and then a fence. And it just wasn't very appealing at all. But then when you walk in Hogsmeade at this game, you're just like, oh my gosh. I prefer the so, Lego Harry Potter so Hogsmeade. Cool. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm I actually kidding. agree with that Le statement. Lego though. Harry Potter. What? No, I 100% agree with that statement. <laughs> anyway, I just haven't gotten far enough maybe, but also I just don't get it so far. Anyway, I'm just that's, enjoying that's official the official right game. Now. You know, honestly, it's I, tough I when did. I just came from a game that I was very excited for with a really strong, like, well known character in God of War. I, so, yeah, I will say that honestly, how you feel about this game doesn't surprise me. Like, like at that's all fair. because that's fair. even even when we were talking about hogwarts legacy you were already very skeptical, skeptical <laughs> even before well that was out. different because i was like trying to be the devil's advocate i was trying to be like if i'm a listener who hasn't bought this game well i hadn't but mm -hmm. like if i was someone really on the fence about it which i'm not i was not i was trying to make sure we covered all our bases but mm-hmm yeah, I hate to be a, cri a critic, 
or a skeptic, but I just don't get it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I, love I, I mean, I strongly, I st vehemently disagree, but also... <laughs> Th that's usually that's usually how we are anyway <laughs> maybe i just We're don't have main character energy guys oh my gosh energy. <laughs> you guys are on like opposite sides of the screen and i'm like right in the middle underneath exactly that's yeah. like that is the design of the show just in general <laughs> Which, and i think that's absolutely hilarious and uh, and awesome um but okay now we actually going to today. what this episode is about our main topic for today is that we're continuing our timelines series where we go through the history of the wizarding world of Harry Potter and Spencer beautifully covered our first se section, which is a history of magic. And well, I have what? Yes. Abby, I, I wrote the timeline, but Abby covered it for us. Sorry. Say that again. I missed that. I, mean, I I wrote the timeline, but Abby delivered it for us last oh, time. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, my bad. Hey, you guys want to say happy birthday to my mom in person? It's not her birthday, but I think she's here at my house. <laughs> oh, she is. Can she come in real quick? Yeah, yes. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let her I'll see in. if she can. Hold on. Okay. Wow. This is a first. This is the first in the show requirement. I. This is awesome. I love this. And I will answer a fun track, probably Hogwarts March, right here. Or I guess a variation so we don't get copyrighted. That should have been in Hogwarts Legacy. Just Hogwarts March, the whole the whole game. The whole game? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, something yeah. else I didn't mention while we're stalling for time. So many mm -hmm. stairs. Why can't there just There's be... There's a ton of stairs. But you, like, okay, you go I upstairs, stopped like, using no, stairs. Now you have to go across and go up more stairs and then... Oh, wait. I can't tell you what I what I do for that because you probably have not gotten to that point yet. I mean, I have fast travel, but... Never mind. She pulled up in the driveway and Cody was outside and she dropped off the thing and left. So, Aww. sorry, wow. Mom. Happy birthday, Jennifer. Wow. Happy birthday... <laughs> We do need to have your mother on the podcast. I'm not time. happy about. I'm not happy about saying happy yeah. birthday this time because you. I can ask about next week. Failed. She's nearby our house every Monday evening around this time, so I'll see if she can <laughs> drop in one week. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, great. that'd be awesome. Yeah, we'll talk about I don't know about the we'll... third part of this timeline series because it's not going to be a fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we can try pulling her in for another one. We'll pull her in. Yeah, for that's another right. One. Uh, so as I was Last saying time. before. Last time, Abby delivered beautifully Sp Spencer's beautifully written <laughs> um, kind of story of telling the first part, a history of magic. And I have the opportunity to now go through the era that is known as currently the, the Fantastic Beasts era, um, as it looks like we're not getting any more additions in terms of film in this era but that's okay that's perfectly fine is that like uh, official? but we're gonna uh it's not official but i'm kind of i'm kind of taking it as fact sure. at this point um oh officially canceled we don't know but probably. we don't know yeah they could, well be. well officially david zaslav said we currently have nothing no plan in wizarding mm -hmm. world development currently and that was like yeah. oh, six months ago yeah that mm -hmm. kind of tells us at least that it's not green lit or anything right yeah absolutely so now we're gonna go into this fantastic beast era and you guys feel free to stop me at any point if you want to touch on something um so we're gonna start in the 1890s where first the entire story of hogwarts legacy takes place so this is all of it starting in the fifth year of uh, a witch or wizard they do these incredible things with an ancient magic. They stop a goblin rebellion and so much more in between. This is what starts us in the 1890s. And so tier three, tier three. Now, what is canonical here in tier one is in 1891, Ariana Dumbledore is attacked by muggle boys. Now, her father, Percival, seeks revenge on them and murders them to where he is, I think, rightly put into Azkaban. 
So that's a really, really tough time for the Dumbledore family because in that same year, Albus begins his studies at Hogwarts, um, which I think, I, man, I would love, I would love to see a time period of where we follow Albus Dumbledore through Hogwarts. Probably won't be very interesting. I'd love like a short story or something, just like I think testimony of that happening. Well, they've already said they're going to do Hogwarts Legacy sequels, so. Mm -hmm. But also, maybe people would get really mad if they just made it another Albus Dumbledore series. Mm -hmm. So maybe he just I mean, be they a could. side character in the next one. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love for for him to be a side character, but I think I think I would agree with those people who said, "Hey, maybe we're just we're getting a little a lot of Dumbledore, man. A lot of a lot of focus on him, and we've already had a lot. So let's let's do something else." Um, so I absolutely agree with that for sure. Um, in 1892, this was the last time the Chudley Cannons won a League Cup title, which Sad. is fantastic. They're the there's Chicago a, there, Cubs. Of the they're, yeah, world. they're the Chicago Cubs of the Wizarding World. And there's, I did on this timeline, not everything is going to be mentioned, not every Minister of Magic, because I just thought put things that yeah, I thought were that's relevant. A lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so the Quidditch, there's a lot of Quidditch stuff that's not going to be mentioned, but this, this I felt significant. <laughs> right 1892 so yeah. long ago that's so that's such a long time i love uh, their makes uh, you... their slogan was uh we will conquer but then eventually yeah. they just changed it to let's just cross our fingers and hope for the best <laughs> yeah yeah that's cool um and so in 1897 newt scamander is born one of the greatest characters of harry potter is born so really really cool in 1899, a very interesting story. Eloise uh, Mintumble dies in a tragic time-traveling experiment. She is trapped in 1402 for a couple of days upon being rescued by the ministry. She dies due to rapidly aging centuries all at once. Her disruption of time of the time stream causes 25 people to cease to exist the next Tuesday lasts for two and a half days, and the following Thursday asked, uh, lasts only two hours. I never knew about this. So yeah, it was posted. This is a Pottermore story, and I imagine it came around <clears throat> the same wild. time as Cursed Child to mm. kind of build on because Cursed Child is just shows how much time travel in the Wizarding World is really messy. Yeah, because the two times like that we, that we actually a, see it. Prisoner Azkaban Jesus. was a fluke mm -hmm. of a time. Like they barely made everything work. And so mm -hmm. this is what happens yeah. most of the time when wizards time travel. Yeah. I love this edition because it kind of like the, the two times that we see the time travel deal, like work in, in like involved in the story, it goes Smoothly. fairly well. Like it doesn't yeah, mess it actually. up so much, but this is such a drastic consequence of messing with time that now it makes sense of just like oh yeah no one does this no one no one should be touching this you have to have an event like this to kind of help explain that well cursed child they make an alternate universe it. yeah but it's still which i don't know why people more Voldemort, people don't know about that but yeah well because they hate speaking of which child. that just reminded me that my mom did text me and she said by the way if you did need a like a Hagrid or something for future things, that she said that Stephen Fry could play Hagrid. I don't know if we want to if we want to talk. He about does have a great now. voice for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He would be the best person, I guess, if they did Cursed Child. But I just feel like it's always hard Alan to Rickman. replace. Like it's hard to replace well-known actors in well-established roles. Mm -hmm. but, and I don't want an AI <laughs> angry either. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. those are the those are really your um, options though. Like, but he's not he's not as much the problem. He has short scenes. I could get over that. Yeah. It's Alan Rickman that has a sizable that role mm -hmm. in and McGonagall yeah. and people that are really old, not dead, but not exactly. Right. I'm not ready to talk about working. Maggie Smith yet. She's gonna live. She's forever. still alive. She's yeah, still she, alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she and so Julie Andrews, I'm really gonna struggle with <laughs> when their time comes. 
anyways. Yeah. Yeah, Anyways. so moving on, 1899, a lot of things happened. So Dumbledore, Albus, aces his uh, N-E-W-T-S, his, his newts, as it's said. Uh, he's examined in Transfiguration and Charms by Griselda Marchbanks, who later says that he did things with the wand that she's never seen before. Again, ancient another testament was, to... Ancient witch, because she yeah. uh, examined Harry... Mm, yeah in half blood prince so bananas Interesting. bananas but again proving his goatness but ariana that same year accidentally kills her mother in one of her uncontrolled outbursts of magic and even a few months after that ariana is killed in the crosshairs of a three-way duel between Aberforth, albus and grindelwald so this <laughs> started the large divide between albus and abaforth abaforth blooding albus's nose in ariana's funeral sad days <laughs> gosh dang it it's nat season kids i'm sorry <laughs> mm. right in my face wow our listeners can't see spencer's frantic looking around the room if there's, to... if there's <laughs> any it's, more it's not just around the room and it's like going in front of my face <laughs> yeah yeah, if there's any other reason anyway. to to go through and watch the YouTube edition, this is one of the reasons, <laughs> for sure. Um, I'm yeah, I'm just not, I'm not celebrating Ariana's death, guys. No, <laughs> it's like it's an awful time here. to clap. <laughs> it's an awful time to clap for sure. Honestly, so I will. I want to say something here. This okay. is something that I wanted to see, and maybe we would have, but I wanted to see this in Fantastic Beasts in terms of flashbacks. I felt like this was a big piece that we just didn't get. And so, especially when they said secrets of Dumbledore, that that's yeah. this. And it, it turned out to be not Albus's secret, but Aberforth. And that was really well done. Mm -hmm. Pretty well done, I guess. But this is what I was hoping to see on screen. Oh, man. I don't know if I would have been emotionally strong to actually see this i think I, I, it would if, if done right it maybe would have brought people in more that didn't come to secrets of dumbledore but i don't know I if that it. would have fixed it, I doubt it. yeah because she if she must not be named also i feel like if this had been put to screen it would have just been so like just little changes just to just to change things because mm -hmm. that's what she must not be named has been doing in the last few years <laughs> yeah well so moving on into the 1900s man we we've got a lot of things to cover here so obviously first thing that we see in 1901 this comes from the crimes of grindelwald screenplay and movie is corvus lestrange jr dies at sea and so we know a little bit about the story in there um we have this huge flashback exposition uh in the film in 1905, this is when Grindelwald steals the Elder Wand from Gagorovich. Um, and this comes from the Deathly Hallows book and movie. And so in 1907, Merope Gaunt, the mother of Tom Riddle, is born. In 1908, Newt Scamander and Lita Lestrange start their schooling at Hogwarts. And then somewhere around this time period, Dumbledore begins teaching at Hogwarts. Most sources say that it is the 1920s, but this would also mean that he didn't teach new, and that obviously doesn't work. We saw in that. The time we line. saw him teach new. So, right. They yeah. can't take that back. They, They'll see yeah, more. Yeah, they, they're going to see more. In, there's a lot of inconsistencies. So, this is one of those. Yeah. Some inconsistencies. So it, in the 1910s, in 1912, Archer Evermond becomes minister of four magic. He forbids members of the magic community to get involved in World War I, but many decided to do that anyway. And so some wizards decided against treason and tried to reason with the Wizarding Society to take a part in the war. And then one Wizagamot member who held this opinion was one Henry Potter. And obviously, World War One began in 1914. In that same year, in flashbacks, we learned that Newt's commander is expelled 
from Hogwarts being accused of endangering other students. Dumbledore notably opposed this decision as well as Lita being frustrated about her, her friend leaving. Uh, which I guess I had completely forgot about that. Uh, I didn't know that Newt didn't finish his schooling. Yeah. That is crazy. So there's that whole scene in Crimes of Grindelwald flashbacks where Alita's talking to Newt about being expelled. I don't know entirely yeah. why he was expelled. I think it was just like he was handling dangerous beasts all over the place. Just like yeah. bringing them around with him or something. Mm-hmm. And so what it say what it says here is that Newt works a perilous, tedious job at the House Elf relocation office for two years before being transferred to the Beast Division. Um, in 1917, mm. uh, Seldra that is from Black the is that born. is from the screenplay. Yeah, so. the screenplay. Interesting. Um, I have to get those so that way I, I can know a little bit more because obviously I love reading. But Seldra Black is born. She's the mother of Arthur. Weasley um it's Spencer notes this and I think he's absolutely right I mean it's not important really at all but it is kind of crazy and weird or as Spencer puts bananas that Arthur (laughs) is so closely related to the black family uh and it is a little bit weird but I kind of love that at the same time too a lot of of inbreeding but not enough to call it that (laughs) to call it what I said it's some it's some inbreeding but not enough to call it that. It's 28 families, not one. Yeah, fair enough. (laughs) Anyway. So in the 1920s, uh, in 1921, Henry Potter ends his tenure on the Wizagamot and his pro-Muggle stance along with his family said to be why the Potters are not included in the sacred 28 wizarding families like Spencer just mentioned right now. Um, And I, I... it may not be important, but I do love that fact. That is important. I love that that no, happened. The last yeah. thing wasn't important. This is important. Yeah. But in 1925, and this comes from the Half-Blood Prince book, Bob Ogden first visits the Gaunt Hovel. Is that correct? Hovel. It's like a shack. Hovel? Oh, okay. Uh, and so later, Morphin uh, Gaunt attacked Tom Riddle Sr., sending both he and his father, Marvello, to Azkaban. So, I, again, all of this comes from the Half Blood Prince because later in 1925, Merlot tricks Tom Riddle Sr. into marrying her, which I do remember reading this and be like, oh man, this is, this is so trippy. Um, yeah, so David, but- as you'll note, um, when I put the title of the thing, it's because we visually or we visually see it in the movie or mm-hmm. we read, we read direct accounts of it happening. If it's mm-hmm. a fact, it's either told by Dumbledore or, or we know it from Pottermore or something else. Right. Or read yeah. about by Hermione, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in early 1926, um, Marvolo I'm saying these, I'm butchering these names, but it's like 914 at night. So I'm okay with it. Uh, he finishes his six month sentence uh, in Azkaban to find Merope gone. He withers away in his grief and he dies around two years later. Uh, Merope uh, becomes pregnant with Tom Riddle and then Tom Sr., I'm assuming, leaves her soon after. And Dumbledore yeah. attributes to the likelihood that Merope stopped giving him love potion upon expecting a child, either by guilt or confidence that he wouldn't leave her because she's having his kid. Uh, and Merope sells the Slytherin locket to Borgen and Burks. So, and obviously, what we Which know is this December... happens at the same time as the yeah. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And because that's where the movie and film uh, screenplay takes place, December 6th through December 7th in 1926. In December 31st of 1926, Miss Cole, a teenager at the time, begins working at the London Orphanage a few weeks before Marope came to the orphanage, very pregnant, gave birth, and named her son Tom Riddle Jr., and then died. Thanks. Mm hmm. But in 1927, as Tina alludes to in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, at the end, Newt publishes his famed book on magical creatures in the following year. Um, 
And then that's what takes us into Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. So early in that year, Grindelwald escapes his prisoner transport. Three months later, Newt attempts to get his international (laughs) travel ban revoked. And the ministry tries to recruit him to find credence, and he refuses. But Dumbledore talks him into doing it instead. And then the rest of the movie takes off from there. And Dumbledore at this time begins teaching transfiguration instead of defense against the dark arts. Which, honestly, having Dumbledore teaching defense against the art, dark arts sounds awesome, but doesn't make sense. Transfiguration. I feel like to me that he would be teach one anything, of the things though. that he could teach anything, but he I think teach Transfiguration would be the thing that oh he can do things with the wand that no one else can. I would I love like... to see him teach divination. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be like a guessing game like it wouldn't be <laughs> it any would kind be. of magic basis it'd be like it'd mm-hmm. be like what he was saying with Marope and tom he's like i i suspect it was this if my if my suspicions are true which they always they pretty much always are mm-hmm. it's not predicting the yeah. future it's just guessing the future <laughs> with, with, with Dumb, yeah professor dumbledore Anyway, please continue. <laughs> so in 1928, Morvin Galt returns home from his three-year sentence to find his family dead and gone. Rubius Hagrid is also born to giantess Frewulfa and her human wizard father. No, As no. we head into the 19 I realized that Tom was older than Hagrid. I knew that they were at They're, school at the same time, yeah. but I didn't realize that he was mm-hmm. a little older. Because Hagrid was expelled in Mithra Beer. Yeah, and Tom was probably was what, in his sixth year. Sixth year? Yeah. 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 It makes sense. But I just in, never thought about it. Yeah. In the Chamber of Secrets, I always thought that Tom Riddle, even though he was smaller than Hagrid, still carried that that presence of, well, I'm not only like I'm older, I'm more experienced, I'm I'm better. And, and even Hagrid at his size looked so, so young. I mean, it was you hard to tell. You barely see young still... Hagrid at all. Yeah, they just mm-hmm. throw like, just, just they throw, just throw stuff like... on him. It's like one yeah. shot. Shorter hair. <laughs> Shorter hair and all that. Yeah. Hey, they, I think probably because he was clean shaven too. Which was... No, I think, I think <laughs> young Hagrid just had hair all over his face. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Up did not you can't see any of it yeah anyway. did not even own a hairbrush so that's cool but in the 1930s the infamous pure blood directory is published anonymously but many believe that it's to have been written by cantankerous not um, well done. i i yeah I'm, I'm proud of myself too but he one of the ancestors not <laughs> is one of voldemort's name inner circle of death eaters later on and 1931 a tragic a tragic tale uh fred wolfa abandons hagrid so sad day in 1932 uh fantastic beasts and the secrets of dumbledore the whole thing happens and so the apple apple be uh apple buy is not part of the movie <laughs> same year. it's not part of the movie different separate thing. thing same year different thing uh the arrows defeat in the that's uh vult, vultures and the famously long 16 day quidditch match which i think spencer you've brought up in the quidditch episode yes but it's also mentioned in like chamber of secrets or prisoner of azkaban because harry reads it is that in his yeah. copy of quidditch through the ages but then we read about it in the real quote-unquote quidditch through the ages mm, yeah so in 1935, Jokunda Sykes is the first ever witch to cross, or anyone magical, first ever to cross the Atlantic Ocean by broom. Dang. So obviously, if you play Hogwarts Legacy and you happen to get a broomstick, even just going to Hogmeets to, from Hogwarts is a long time. So I can imagine how long it takes to do go across the Atlantic Ocean by broom. So... That's crazy. But in 
But in 1937, Tom Riddle terrorizes two fellow orphans in the cave. He later uh, put the locket Horcrux in. Mm. Go Tom. Yeah. The worst. Yeah. Most Go of Tom. this stuff happened. Most of this era is just nasty Tom Riddle stuff. And that's why we're going to begin the next episode too. Yeah. And so let's continue with this uh, mean streak of Tom Riddles because in August of 1938, as we see in the Half-Blood Prince, Dumbledore visits Tom Riddle to introduce him to the world of magic and invite him to study at Hogwarts. Uh, also, Tom revealed that he learned about the Chamber of Secrets in his first year at Hogwarts, which takes us into the 1940s because in 1942, Dumbledore tells Harry of how Tom Riddle first visited his uncle Morphin Gaunt use magic to incapacitate him, steal the Slytherin ring, and then framed him for the murder of Tom, Tom committed of the entire Riddle family, his father and grandparents. So this is understood to be Tom Riddle's first murders. We also learned that uh, through Dumbledore that he likely used these murders to create his first Horcrux in the ring. Real positive so, stuff. Real good, real good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So Real through fanfare. Slughorn's tampered memory and his untampered memory, he gives Harry later on, we learn that later that year, Tom and the rest of the Slytherins in the Slug Club hung out with Slughorn. And after his associates leave, Tom inquires Professor Slughorn about Horcruxes, specifically the possibilities of splitting the soul into seven pieces. And so in 1943, we learn that Tom has successfully opened the Chamber of Secrets and unleashed the Basilisk hidden within and through that tom riddle kills moaning myrtle using that murder to create the diary horcrux so tom frames hagrid and aragog H hagrid gets expelled and gets his wand snapped while tom gets an award for special services to the school Boo. the worst the absolute worst but in 1945 things start to look up as dumbledore defeats grindelwald in the famous duel Afterwards, Grindelwald gets locked up in Azkaban, and Dumbledore takes the Elder Wand. And this concludes Dumbledore. the Fantastic Beasts era. So we have three big movies, but a lot mm -hmm. of this is just because of the lack of appreciation and continuation of that. We just didn't mm -hmm. get much other than stuff we already knew, which unfortunately is pretty much just Tom Riddle and a little bit of Hagrid. Mm -hmm. So because the timeline builds it out as to like this 1945 duel is really, really important, but we also mm -hmm. have never seen it. And so <laughs> need it. like, it's like the whole, the whole it. universe hinges on a few different moments. Like Harry killing Voldemort as a baby being one of them. Um, of course, beating him again later, but mm -hmm. this is probably the other biggest one. I and agree. then Hogwarts Legacy just felt like a good point to cut off from history of magic to like the modern era. Like it, mm -hmm. even even with all my distaste or whatever we're calling it, it's still a very good transition from old magic to the modern era of magic that we see Harry mm -hmm. Potter in. Mm -hmm. And so if this yeah. felt like a great place to cut it off, but also we haven't seen the dang thing. And that's all I want. No one cares yeah. about this anymore, though. Not even Mads well, Mikkelsen. Sad to him. And, and, and maybe that's why they gave us that kind of little taste of a duel between Dumbledore and Grindelwald at the end wasn't of enough. Secrets of Dumbledore because they knew that it, they weren't going to do it. Um, yeah, and like I feel like they may have started Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them too early in the timeline. Like it was too I, confident because mm -hmm. 20, 19 years that's a long mm -hmm. time. And so, like, I remember even making because then they they crimes of Grindelwald, they're like, oh, it's going to be a big time jump. And then it was, was not a time jump, maybe a year, less than a year. And then. <laughs> Secrets of Dumbledore was a solid five years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't feel like I, that much, but no, I, I think 
normally I disagree with you, but in this, I do agree with you. The starting point for the Fantastic Beast films and, and all that, I think was a little bit too, too early and maybe a contributing factor of, you know, why it's so convoluted because you have to try and fit some other stuff into this time period, into a story. But then the focus also shifts from Newt Scamander to Albus Dumbledore. You're just like, why? I don't get that. Yeah. So like if they had done it later, it could maybe help explain a little better why McGonagall's just at Hogwarts. Mm Mm-hmm. Not completely, but it would at least help. And then Dumbledore teaching there in the 1920s would make more sense if Newt was expelled in the 1920s instead Mm -hmm. of 1914. Mm -hmm. And it just slides everything down a little bit. It doesn't really change much about Dumbledore. It doesn't change much about any of the characters because their birth dates would just change because those Mm -hmm. were added when Fantastic Beasts was created as a story and film. It's a great mm-hmm. film. I just think it, if you had Fantastic Beasts and where to find them take place in 1932, for example, we'd be a little closer to the the end. Because mm-hmm. now, if, like we said, if we they do a fourth movie, which they probably won't, but if they did one more movie, it would have to be, mm-hmm. what's that, 12 years after? Yeah. Yeah. Which is hard. It, it, yeah, hard. It, it is hard. Um, hmm. hmm. Even two yeah. movies is a lot for that long of a period of time. So well, I, I, I it, well, it goes back to the whole. Now you got to find some other story to tell in between all of that. And if the focus had has shifted from Newt to Dumbledore, and then you're going to shift it back to Newt for the next film, and then shift it back to Dumbledore for the last film, is that doable? Is that even story wise? Is is does it even flow? to do it that way and i know cole said something about this like a long time ago he said what if they did like a one-off with newt again to just kind of like reset things or whatever to fill in the gap pilot cleanser and then hey let's let's wrap it up with with dumbledore but that's smart too i would be i would be way okay with that i think Mm -hmm. it's just not this is the era to if we're gonna have to step away from this era we should just move to between Harry Potter and Chris child. That just feels like a lot of stuff we could build upon. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll talk about that next week. I'm going to die. It's gonna so be much happens. Mm. But exciting stuff. Literally the, the, the meat and bones of the Harry Potter universe happen in the next in like 20 years but you don't have to rehash the books no i'm not gonna do it's not no just hit yeah just hit hit the hit the good spots because i think that's what you did in this one you wrote out all the important stuff that needed to be talked about because you're setting up the greatest next timeline so yeah greatest hits greatest hits of the 19 the 1900s early 1900s so and late and next week will be greatest hits of the late 1900s Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it uh, for us here on the show of requirement to Harry Potter podcast. If you are listening to the audio version, make sure to subscribe, leave us a, a review as it helps us kind of grow and nice grow review up in the Hog- Harry Potter. <sighs> Washington Sentinel. Washington Sentinel. <laughs> the bane of my existence. <laughs> anyway, leave a good review, please. Or at least. Be fair if you're criticizing. Yeah. Be, fair. be fair. Help us. Help us be better. Yeah. Gonna, Washington like Sentinel. That. Goodness gracious. <clears throat> anyway, but if you are on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment about what your favorite part of this time period was. If you any of you guys say Tom Riddle's, any of Tom Riddle's stuff, like serious questions. There's the door. There. Uh, if you have played Hogwarts Legacy and you have an opinion on it, Make sure to leave it in the comment section also. So that way so we can doesn't feel alone. You know, and we, we're gonna do a full episode on it eventually. So right. please give us thoughts so we can just talk about your stuff. Then we don't have to talk yeah. that much. We'll just be like, here's what cool people said. Yeah. 
And if you're not listening to it on YouTube, but you still want to uh, communicate with us, you can first email us at showofrequirement at gmail.com, or you can follow us on Instagram at hpotter underscore fanatics. And so you can reach us on any of those platforms. But until <laughs> next time, for Spencer and Abby. Sorry, I'm looking at your glasses. Mischief managed. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>